Centric Companies, we are a development company, real estate company. We create communities. So whether it be apartment complexes, strip malls, uh, homes for families to, to live in, we develop property and we create the communities. So any structure that might be in the community. Every, really every building in the community is what drives the community, whether it's the daycare that you're dropping your kids off for, the, the hair salon where you're getting your hair done, the uh, coffee shop that you're buying your coffee from in the morning is all really part of the community. And so we have a belief that it's really important that the community all thrives together. It's not just an isolated structure, but rather that we're supporting all of the needs of those that live in that community. We generally do not do master plan communities. So we're, we're within a community and, and we might take a piece of property that's specific that uh, lends itself well to an apartment complex for people to live in or individual homes. So it's, it's really a site specific. We do a fair amount of infill. An example would be one community that we have right now has 137 homes. And it used to be at one time, the city offices were there. There was uh, some apartments that had fallen into disrepair, strip centers. There was some contamination in the soils. So we went in and worked with the city to clean that site up and put 137 new homes. That's what the need was in that area. So that's an example of an infill piece where we're really going in and how do we strengthen the community and what is the need here? And then we have other areas that were on the edges of growth. And so we might have a field that we're going in and we're master developing that to put homes in. Uh, we have a project right now that, that we're going to be uh, starting in the spring. And that one has a component where we potentially are gonna have a gas station and have a strip center to be able to put the coffee shops in plus about another 105 homes that'll go in that community. So we look at each one specifically say, what does a community need and how do we create something that people are gonna love to live there and create memories? We see a little bit of all of it. Uh, the project that I was just telling you about is an example of the homes and the potential gas stations that the city owned that piece and they approached us and asked us to put a proposal together because we'd done other work in that city. And they really liked what we had done. And so they said, would you please come back, give us a proposal of what you see could be the vision. So we gave them a proposal and they picked us. So we, we do a fair amount of that, that we work closely with the city governments in, in helping them execute their vision, as well as, you know, through the, the networks of people that might bring opportunities to us that they already know about. And in addition, that we will go actively, proactively go to properties that we see an opportunity and, and approach those landholders as well. So it's a, it's a little bit of combination of all of it. If you're getting into the cities, you know, you could easily put 100 units on an acre or less if it's an apartment complex. So if we're putting in a 200 unit apartment complex, it could go on a very small piece. Whereas um, in another example, we have a project that has 187 home sites. Well, that particular piece is over 200 acres. And so the lots are much larger. We have open spaces for trails. And so it's much more spread out. So it really does vary on what's the outcome that we're looking for. What is the, the purpose um, and the scale that we're trying to do? You know, from the dollar amount, um, you know, the, the total dollar of any given project, you know, they'll range from $10 million to $150 million, depend, depending on the project. And, you know, and th these projects might be a six month project, or it could be a multi-year project. We do do some value add. We, we own a couple of apartment complexes now that, um, the owners stopped reinvesting into the project. There was a lot of deferred maintenance, deferred maintenance, meaning, you know, the decks were falling off the sides of the buildings and the windows, um, you know, had air leaks coming through them. And we took both of those complexes, we went in and we put all new windows, new decking, new flooring, new cabinets, resurfaced the parking lot and, and brought it up to a standard that people could live in and enjoy and be proud of their home. Um, and so we do do some of that. And I really love that. I, I love creating and making things better. So value add is something that's a lot of fun for us. Yeah, those two were on the smaller side. Uh, it was 63 units 
And um, it was two, two complexes, one that was 36, the one that was 25. So 63 total. I did that math wrong. That would be 61 total, I believe. Currently, the majority of our work has been in the Minnesota market. Um, however, we have done some, some opportunities in the Utah market. We've done some opportunities in the Florida market. And so we're, we're seeing greater and greater opportunities throughout the United States. Um, we just um, opened up a, a satellite office in Utah and another sa satellite office in California. And so we're, we're looking at opportunities of where can we really impact the community and make a difference is, is ultimately what we want to accomplish. A lot of it is driven based on what we're familiar with. Um, it, it, real estate, you really need to understand the local dynamics. Uh, each market is so unique. So we try to be in a market that we have some understanding of, as, as well as markets that have opportunities. And, you know, there are markets in California, as an example, that we would not want to touch. Um, you know, the, there's enough regulatory environment that, that could be scary for us to touch. And then there's other markets in California that are great opportunities. Um, and that holds true for Utah. There's some markets in Utah that are a little bit overbuilt and other markets that, that are sleeper markets that there's some great opportunities. So each market's unique and it's so important that you've got to have an understanding of those markets. So for us, it's really, do we have some kind of a tie? Do we have some institutional knowledge about that market? Um, and that doesn't mean we wouldn't look at a market and learn the market, but until you really understand the market, you want to be a little bit cautious. From a personal standpoint, I actually grew up in California and, and then uh, spent some time in Nevada, Utah, and now in Minnesota. So I have some ties to those markets and have step, kept uh, those relationships. So that's in part those markets. Uh, the president of Centra Companies is based in the Utah market and has worked there for his entire career. So we've got some really good connections there. Um, and then uh, the head of the equity raise is based in California. So we've got some good connections there. And, and so that's really how those markets have all come about is because we've got institutional knowledge of people that work in the company and are experienced there. The, the market changes, the needs of the investors change, the needs of the communities change. A great example is we we were right in the middle of it when the market turned on us in 2008. And the, the need was no longer developing new opportunities. The need was how do we help with the assets that are distressed? And so we worked for many years. We worked with banks and, and other investors and in helping work and reposition those assets to make them valuable commodities to um, contribute back to the communities. But that ran its course. And th that was pretty much over in 2013, 14. There were not so many opportunities. There were still some left, but most of those assets had been worked through. And so starting in 2014, we pivoted again and it was, okay, how do we take um, in some cases, still distressed assets. Um, you know, we had through that period of time, there was a piece of property that the city wanted to redevelop. It was an abandoned school site. And so we redeveloped that site and, um, and put, in this particular case, homes in that site. And so it, it really depends on the market. Today, the market's shifting again on us. Uh, interest rates have gone up. Uh, people are a little bit concerned about their investments. Uh, and there's still a need specific to housing. There's a huge need for housing. We do not have enough houses. However, it's challenging when interest rates have over doubled. And, and so you have buyers that at one time could afford significantly more house or trying to figure out, do I buy a house now? Do I wait? And so a lot of our focus right now is building houses that are affordable, that people can afford, because they can afford significantly less now than they could a year ago and two years ago when the interest rates are at 3%. And now we're, we're uh, well over seven in many cases. And so right now we're really focusing on how do we help people buy a house that, that they can live in and, and afford? And so that, that's really what the focus is now, which is very different than where we were just three, four years ago. At one time we were working with a large regional bank 
and we were working out um, through all of their REO. And it was working really well. And ultimately, they sold us their entire REO portfolio to help work that out for them. So we, we bought that and worked it out. Uh, another example, we worked with a large national lender that had um, a large portfolio they foreclosed on. And we bought that entire portfolio from them. And these portfolios had a variety of things. Uh, some of it was just raw land. Some of it was partially developed land that partially developed, meaning some of the sewer lines were put in, some of the water lines were put in, but the roads weren't in yet. Uh, we had cases where we had partially finished uh, townhome complexes, partially finished homes, uh, lots that were finished but needed something built on. So it was really all over the board. Uh, I can remember we had cabins that, on lakes that were partially finished. So we we would buy various portfolios of those assets and then look at what, what needs to be done to make these um, contributing again to the community. And in many cases, it was just we need to finish it out and and create something that, that the market wants and, and can contribute. We had one that I think had 450 properties in it. Um, the, the bank I was referring to, I think there was somewhere around 100, 120 properties in that one. Um, and we had several smaller banks that approached us because we were having some success and success leaves clues. And so we had other banks that were calling us saying, what could you do to help us? So we had other banks that, you know, we might only have 10, 15, 20 assets that they needed help with. But, you know, our, our one of our largest was about 450 pro different properties. Um, and then we'd have some that, you know, be five or six properties. It's interesting in today's dollars, it's not very much. Um, but the, uh, the one that was 450 properties example, we, we bought that one, I believe it was $12 million and, uh, it's value book value when they foreclosed was 140 million, I believe it was. And, uh, so everything had just plummeted in their values pretty significantly. Uh, and, and so a lot of these, you know, we were buying assets that were five, 10% of what their their original value were. We were formed January 16th of 2011. And so the, our first several years was working through a lot of the distressed assets. That can be really challenging when you have all these assets that everybody's a little bit afraid of, they're not sure what to do. And you just have to look at them and understand each individual market. What, what's going on in the market? What are the needs? Even when the market was bad, there's still a need. People are still trying to open new businesses. People are still trying to buy a house. People are still trying to live their lives and grow. And a lot of that has to be driven by real estate. And so we would look at that and say, what well, you know, what is the opportunity here? There's not a lot of opportunities when people are concerned about their financial future for um, cabins. So I can remember we, we bought about 20 lots that were all for cabins. And we sat on those and sold them in 2016. And so you've got to look at each one and be pretty specific. And a lot of it has to do with the buy. If you're buying it at the right time, at the right price, there's always opportunity. And so that's the key is, is knowing what the market's doing and making sure you're moving quickly. Because if the market's continuing to slide and you sit on the asset for too long, that's when you're going to start getting in trouble. And, and so you've got to be able to prepare to move very quickly on those assets and then just make sure you're buying them right and don't overpay. And, and that's in real estate, when people get in trouble, it's almost always because they overpaid. So I, uh, I had my own home building company in Utah and sold that um, to another entity that bought it. And when I did that, a national home builder that was based in Utah asked if I would come work for them. So I went to work for them, was only there for a few months at the corporate offices. And they said, hey, we're struggling in the Minneapolis market. Would you be willing to go there and help us see if we can stabilize it? And so I looked at it and said, yeah, happy to go there. Don't leave me there. I don't want to stay in Minnesota. All I know about Minnesota is it's really cold because I've seen that on football games. And so, so they said, yeah, no, for sure. You know, just get a turn around and come back. So we moved our family. Um, at that point, we had five children. We moved to Minnesota uh, in April of 06 and July of 
that same year we had our sixth sixth child. My wife was pregnant when we moved. And so we were looking at how to establish this. And this is an 06. And I'm looking at the market going, just something's not right here in Minnesota. And I couldn't put my finger on it. And about a year later, I saw, because the, the, the peak, we talk about 2008 being the collapse. And that's what we felt. And that's what matters. Because what we felt is, is really what hurt us. But if you look at the historical information, the peak actually happened in 2005. And so I got here in six and I'm seeing something's amiss in the data as I'm trying to figure out how to turn this thing around. And it quickly started to accelerate until 2008, it, it all collapsed. And so at that point I'm running a division, I'm a division president for a national home builder and the market collapses on us. And you know, at that point, a lot of it was about how do we generate cash with the assets that we have. And so we continued to build through that um, and making sure that that uh, we were able to protect our investors and generate that cash to protect the investors of the company. Uh, unfortunately, that company ended up going into a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And, and that's when I said, well, you know, I love working for myself. I love creating things. I love building communities. I love making things happen. Now might be a good time to go back out on my own. I saw a lot of opportunities in the market. Uh, a lot of people were really scared and concerned about what was going on. Whereas I was seeing there's some real opportunities here to make a difference and do some really great things. And, and that's when I decided to do that. And so I went to that company in 2010 and said, you know, I, I would like to move on. And I know I'm a key person. So how do we work through this? And they came back to me shortly thereafter and said, if you're not going to be in Minnesota, we don't want to be, if you're not going to work for us in Minnesota, we don't want to be in Minnesota because you're staying there. Would you just buy all of our assets? And so at that point, I bought all of their Minnesota assets from the national home builder. They exited it. And then that's when we started up Centra and then immediately started working with banks on the distressed assets. When we go back to 2006, seven and eight, those were some really tough times and a lot of people were really hurt. The banks really just privacy. Um, keeping confidence is just so critical to me. And, you know, unless I've got express permission, I just prefer to keep everything private for their protection if that's what they choose. So our five core values are you do the right thing. Doesn't matter what the consequences, we do what's right. Uh, accountability. So we're accountable for what we do and what we don't do. Uh, compassion. You know, er everybody's going through trials and we need to be conscious of that, whether it's being compassionate towards people that are on our team, contractors work working with, investors, we need to show compassion for everybody. And then humility. And humility is not so much thinking less of yourself, but more thinking of yourself less. You know, recognizing everybody's got something to contribute and we want to learn it. We want to hear from you. We want your contribution and then growth. Now we want to grow as a company. That's really important, but the growth is actually individual growth. And so we encourage our team to, to, to read books. Yeah. I, I lead by example. I actually read 50 to 60 books a year, um, constantly learning, whether it's reading books, it's being part of, um, a social network, going to seminars, uh, taking continuing education classes, college, whatever it would be, we encourage that continual growth as an individual um, and not just business. But I look at my life and say, well, how today am I a better employer? How am I a better coworker? How am I a better husband? How am I a better father? How am I a better disciple of Jesus Christ? Whatever it is, whatever that role is in my life, how am I better as a result of what I've done? And that's what we really encourage. So yeah, those are the five core values we have.